and it's recording. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Dynamic Data and Capabilities uh, Working Group. Um, thanks for coming. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen so that you uh, can see the notes. All right, so um, start the recording. Uh, and I will ask everyone to put their names in, their name in the list of attendees, please. Um, and I'll ask, uh, uh, is there a volunteer to take notes today? Jim, thank you. I can do it. Kevin, you are cut, Jim. <laughs> Jim is joining us from Tokyo, I believe, or yeah. Japan. Uh, Sapporo. Sapporo, all okay. right. Um, and please, everyone, ask, add items to the agenda or things that you'd like to discuss. Um, or things that you want to like start a discussion and get a, get a bunch of a group of people that will be later be participating in a, in another session, as as we did uh, recently with the identity um, special interest. Um, all right, so let's start with uh, a round of intros and updates according to the list of attendees on the top. All right, so I can guess that's me first. All right, so uh, last couple of weeks, we started the special interest group uh, on identity and it's led by um, Andrea Cruz. Um, so in that, in that sense, we had a, the first meeting, we created the IRC channel ActiveFest Identity and we started a project management GitHub repo uh, that will handle P, uh, the, the PMing of the IDM, uh, the Identity Manager, uh, Proof of Concept, and Spec. And on the, on the code side, I uh, released a, a more recent version of Delta CIDTs uh, with basically two, well, two small improvements on the RGA um, type, which is used by, by PeerPad and all other apps. Um, so, first one is, is a better collision-free UUID generator. Uh, it was something that was only happening in tests because uh, it is uh, theoretically safe across across processes. But since the, some tests run, run the same process, there were some collisions, and so I fixed that. And I also added a bunch of RGA tests. I toughened the, the tests and but but no required changes so the tests came out green um also in the peer star app realm i did a, a small initiative of, of speeding up the tests which was making some tests not be timeouts based and be um event based uh, so no, instead of waiting or in some case instead of waiting uh, for some fixed period of time and seeing if there is convergence, for instance, we just listen to the events and test convergence in that case. So it's in the, the so that the time that the tests run is is optimal. Um, I released also just released a few minutes ago peer star app version 0.10.0. .0. Um, this is like a major. It's not a major in terms of Semver, but it's a major release uh, with many fixes and improvements on the replication. Uh, uh, part of it. So uh, I was analyzing uh, whether the deltas were, were optimal. So deltas between replicas were optimal. And they were in the case of two collaborations or two, uh, two, two nodes doing uh, concurrent changes. When there was more uh, concurrency, then the, the protocol was not, 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 not the protocol, but the internals were not behaving uh, that well. And, and so it last resort, it sends the whole state. So sending the whole state for large documents means that the encryption decryption happening on a large chunk of, of uh, a large buffer will bog down uh, any, any app. And that was what I suspect was happening to PeerPad. And so hopefully uh, this will, will, will fix some of the uh, um, some some of the uh, issues that PeerPad was was having with having the, the event loop, so the main thread occupied a lot with um, crypto stuff, 
uh, let's let's hope so. Um, so some more tests coming up with uh, with that, uh, and yes. So the the downside of that is that uh, Pure Star App is backwards incompatible in the, the, the sense of the, the replication protocol. But since we're not we have not reached yet version one point zero, um, uh, it's first it's hard to to to, to replicate that into. Uh, Represent that in Semver, um, and also I don't think that's that's a major a major issue uh, because we never haven't reached one zero. Um, anyway, that's my update. Um, so I'll stop sharing. Uh, Jim, you're next. Hi, Jim. Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> uh, you're muted. Okay. Uh, where's my next section? Oh, okay. My name's gone. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's see. Exciting thing that happened in the last two weeks. Um, I was uh, added as the the official maintainer of PeerPad on GitHub. Yay! Um, let's see. I, before I left for Japan, I was experimenting with the end-to-end -end load tests and, uh, on my laptop, on my desktop, and on my Linux box at home. So, uh, sort of understand that a lot better. Uh, I was trying to see how many. Um, Replications I could run at once and then seeing where the limits were. Um, and then I had to hop on a plane because I talk at Tokyo Node Fest and uh, spent most of last, last week um, sort of prepping for that talk. I gave a quick talk on Thursday night at the, the one of the that project developers in Osaka organized another um, sort of meetup thing. Just a small group of people went to that one, and uh, the uh, talk went really well. I thought so. Um, I covered uh, four different distributed web things. I originally wanted to do a bunch of visualizations for it, but uh, I sort of ran out of time. But it was mostly slides. But uh, it, it was pretty well received. I think um, the people in Japan don't really know a lot about this. Any of these projects so, um, and then uh, and then afterwards I went up with the family to uh, Hokkaido which is like the northern island of Japan and I'm in Sapporo right now um, and since I've been here uh, I worked on um, I saw running the unit test for Peerstar app it was um, getting a lot of linter warnings because there's new uh, more restrictive um, settings for the linter in Aegis, is that how you say that? Um, and uh, so the approach I took with that was to mostly um, just disable the warnings on a case by case basis. And I think what we should do is um, break them out into uh, individual issues and um, try to fix them um, individually, uh, try to figure, figure out strategies. So, like, there's a lot of console.log. That we use, and uh, I think we have to replace that with something. Um, and also, in the last two weeks, uh, I got a new contract, so I'm around for several more months. Yay! So, uh, in progress, um, yeah, right now I'm trying to figure out how to. The tests are really chatty, and it's distracting, and it's hard to. There's some things, a lot of things pop up which I don't think should be there. Um, so I'm investigating and cleaning up the warnings. Um, I want to take some of the test cases and sort of establish performance budgets. So that's related to the end-to-end -end load tests. And I want to stabilize that a lot further. I think it should, we should be able to, uh, I'll see how Pedro's new changes, he just released uh, affect that. Um, but I'd like to see uh, much, much higher numbers in terms of uh, how many peers we can run at once on the load tests on my Linux box. Um, and I saw Pedro's 
been putting some work into uh, a new interface for persistence. So I want to really look at that and how that's going to be used by the pinner. Um, and we've been talking about um, how what how to get this latest stuff deployed to the production peer pad. Um, so um, discussing whether to um, chop out some of the UI that's there and just make it a little bit more simpler because we just want to deploy to internal us users um, and of course do the production deploy. There's currently no pinner deployed, so we got to figure out where to put that. Um, next week, I've committed to uh, talking to Google in Tokyo. They're doing the signed HTTP exchanges work here. So I'm going to talk to Lydell about that. And I'll, of course, I'll write up my trip notes and then go back to Canada. So that's it for me. Thank you, Jim. Any questions for Jim? I have a, a suggestion. Um, so if uh, you approve all the latest changes and upgrade PeerPad to the latest PeerStar, um, and, and uh, uh, I suggest, and, and we deploy um, deploy a pinner mm -hmm. peer pad that we try it out as the as uh, the official uh, note taking to next uh, on on the next meeting. Um, okay, we could have a backup, but I think it's that's that's a good a good goal to to have um, because I, I'm I've now ramped up the, the the peer star tests on that specific use case for for peer pad. I'm making very uh, high frequency concurrent changes, and I think uh, there is a lot of improvement there. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I well, actually. Oh, sorry. Well, I should, when I just thought of um, Dirk, has just uh, posted an issue saying that he sped up the uh, how quickly things uh, peers can find each other as well. Mm -hmm. So, yep. that's enough to show this case. Yeah, I just wanted to point out that while well, using CritPad today, I noticed a few times that it kind of glitched out and lost my changes. And I guess it like Jim, it lost your name as well. So I feel like our baseline of performance that we have to like match is not that high. So we should be okay. Yeah, exactly. I lost mine too, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah, same here. So another, another case to, to migrate. All right, any more questions to Jim? All right, uh, that was a suggestion, not a question. Uh, uh, after Jim is Andres Sosa. Yeah, okay guys, hi. I'm working on Discussify with Andre Cruz. Uh, I open a new issue, a new issue with the Q&A for the UI level for something that uh, we predicted for as a new features and something that is missing from the implementation side and it was already predicted from the design side. Um, also, uh, yeah, yeah. for Discussify, I left everything on the repo, which has the, all the user journeys and the, the style guide updated. And then for PeerPad, I completed the mobile version, which is right now read-only, because we have that discussion that the edit side of the, the application shouldn't be on, on mobile devices. Um, in progress, I have uh, kick-started the, the Discussify run manual, something that I stopped it for a bit, but yeah, it's it's uh, at least it starts uh, at some at some point. Um, the current status for the pinning for the pinning for um, peer path, I have predicted some examples and have this list on the the notes. And the next steps for this will be discussed with the team and maybe provide a table with all the scenarios and even the bootstrap for for the pages. Uh, what are the the scenarios that that Im, Im will imply to change? something on the UI level. And yeah, for now, that, that's it. Awesome. Uh, thank you. Any questions for Andre? No, so let's jump. Uh, next is David. Oh, actually, sorry, I had, a, I had a question. Oh yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah uh, Andre, is there uh, somewhere where we can, uh, we can see those scenarios? Currently. I'll upload them tomorrow because we need to discuss uh, here at Moxie and with the team before just jumping to you and maybe uh, discuss as a working group. I need to define that first. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, not much to report after 
Thanksgiving week, but I've just been writing tests for uh, social proof and thinking more about how it might be deconstructed and used elsewhere as modules. So um, that's, that's really all that's going on. A uh, cu couple bugs with Firefox too. Um, also, uh, hopefully maybe there's uh, a few minutes afterwards if, if anyone wants to just spend two minutes talking real quick about um, uh, software uh, security slash, um, you know, what would you call it? Uh, I, don't, I, just, I just don't know if all the crypto has been vetted properly. So just a real quick two minutes on that. Yeah. Um, I'd like to uh, add to that is uh, the, the thing that just happened on NPM with Dominic's cars module. And, you know, yeah. like the whole NPM community needs the social proof thing like so bad right now. Um, so. <laughs> well, yeah. And, and so if anyone wants to, two minutes is all I, I just want to talk about my experience doing that kind of thing. And what maybe I'm probably completely unaware of any efforts inside of the company or this so this group doing uh, the validation of all this crypto code. Yes, please. Let's do a, a, a let's do that after the meeting. Uh, I'm interested. Any questions for David? No, thank you, David. Uh, all right, next up, uh, Arkady. Uh, okay, so not a, not a ton of updates. So successfully completed uh, dental surgery and Thanksgiving. Uh, so that's that's great. Um, uh, aside from that, I did kind of like a, a mini uh, product session, uh, which focused mostly on uh, immediate kind of needs as opposed to the a little bit further out like consumer oriented polish stuff that like what other has been looking at. So uh, basically the idea there was how do we make this the best, uh, most focused tool for internal company note taking uh, today uh, without thinking necessarily about how it would look to someone from outside PL and so on. So there's an issue that basically focuses on kind of like ruthlessly tearing things out. Uh, look, everyone is froze. Am I, was I glitching out just now? You're okay. Okay, all right. So, um, yeah, so there's an issue linked in my updates. Uh, please uh, take a look at that if you have uh, a moment. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Uh, basically, focuses on just taking things out, making it a more streamlined thing that we can focus on getting the core uh, functionality really great before we kind of build it up. Uh, I didn't? Uh, it has a 404 error. Okay. All right. So I'll, I'll, I'll fix that. Check back through the... Yeah. You, you maybe just need permission to see it. Yeah. Yep. All right. Any questions to Arkady? Um, related, uh, I think David Diaz was talking about um, making the... the the PM stuff for PeerPad public as opposed to yeah. internal only. So, right. Yeah, I, yeah, I think I think David's been kind of pushing for like just more openness across various things. Which, yeah, I mean, I think it could be a little annoying to have a kind of like uh, people chiming in with like minor design input when it's not really the best medium for that, but. That's, I mean, that's a fine cost. So I'm okay with making it public if uh, others are as well. Okay. Um, there's no more questions to Arkady. Let's continue. Um, well, uh, so Adin. Hi. Hey, okay. Um, so. The basic uh, sort of, I have a couple of graphs. I want them to be synchronized in the same state. It's working fine. Uh, I'm pushing off the more sophisticated approaches to this than just sort of the, the brute force send nodes, merge graphs, um, both because I think defining the interfaces is more important right now and more pressing. 
than making the implementation better, but also because the uh, I talked with the IPLD folks at their uh, biweekly and then after for a while yesterday, and they're interested in this, although I guess the word they're using to avoid conflicting with graph sync is replication. So there is an, uh, a repo linked about that. There's nothing in there right now, but it is apparently going to be used soon. Um, I, my stuff is sort of is up there now. Uh, the Git repo is, is shared. It doesn't have all the latest stuff, but it has things that should be working. Um, there's a test. There are tests in there that will sort of show how it gets used. Um, but it's not in. It's not in the you know just plug it into your project and use it state yet. Um, both from lack of testing and also because I want to wrap it in sort of an IPNS style interface layer. Um, there's a spec that is in the repo that discusses that, um, which I'd be happy to talk about more if anyone wants. Um, this ties a little bit into the DAG versioning stuff um, that Andrea uh, put out there, because it's all sort of the same problem of how do we access and talk about version documents and change them. Uh, I'm putting up some new, working on putting up more specs and uh, basically, yeah, and just trying to improve the uh, multi writer IPNS implementation and eventually try and plug it into a causal chat application. Trying to balance between uh, building out more interfaces and building out sort of throwaway demo code. Nice. Uh, quick question. Uh, uh, I think, well, that's just a suggestion. I think, yeah, throwaway apps, yeah, can be, can seem kind of wasteful, but but I think they 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 make for 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 a good demo and a good a good purpose to to get your your things uh, running. So, uh, yeah, if you yeah, want... no, absolutely. That's what I'm just trying to do both. So, like, I built the scaffolding for one, and then I'm like, okay, let me go back and do the. IPNS interfaces, and then right, yeah. it's, it's sort of using the interfaces to help the, or, or using the demo to help make the interfaces easier so that yeah. people can reuse them. Nice. I just want to, to say something. Um, I'm very uh, like interested in what you're doing, uh, Adin. So just to give you some context, um, one of the goals of Discussify and the app before Discussify, which was Kipster, and specifically Kipster, was about you know uh, a knowledge base um, for the for the internet. And if you think about uh, a knowledge base, it can be pretty much a graph of of knowledge nodes and so on. And I'm I'm very interested in, in what you came up with with GraphSync, so that perhaps we could leverage that to have. An open data, open data model to, you know, to expose knowledge bases and so on. Um, I'm not sure if you if you want to comment on on that, if it's possible or if it's um, it's the right tool for the job. But um, I see a lot of potential in, in that. Yeah, the general hypothesis with with this thing is that um, moving around graphs that just contain CIDs is not so expensive. Uh, and synchronizing them even with the you know very basic flooding sync I have now, uh, and probably will replace it with other more sophisticated things later, is is not too bad. Um, and you can use this instead of having um, either a, a centralized, uh, either needing consensus and sort of a centralizing agreement protocol, uh, or making it sort of you know, single writer like uh, IPNS does. All right, so this is this is sort of an attempt at that. We will see how it turns out. Um, my my guess is that it's going to be okay because it it may you may need to tweak your workflow. For instance, I'm not sure how well this would work if you decided to use it with you know peer pads sending every single character, right? But if you want to, if you batch them up into slightly larger groups, then maybe maybe things get a lot easier. Um, the idea is also to try and take into account different use cases of these data structures. Um, so, like the the few that I listed, 
are um, sort of, you know, get like branches where you actually want to keep all of the, the state is the changes, you want to keep all of them. Um, IPNS type of overriding semantics. And then CRDTs, right, and, and operational transform. Um, Delta CRDTs are good, but they only work in this one particular use case in which you can optimize for. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the question is, in, in using a more generic structure like this, is there a way we can accommodate more without uh, compromising too much by just saying you can do anything? And uh, we will see what happens. Oh, cool. Uh, there's, I guess, one more thing. Is there's also a related, there's a related topic about, uh, related to PubSub and like, there's the algorithm for communicating, and then there's the uh, the network of which and how and how the communications are distributed. Um, right now, I'm not using PubSub, but I think that some of the PubSub stuff could be abstracted so that and reused across different. Uh, the topologies can be reused if, even if the network changes, sort of thing. Nice. Um... Uh, I suggest in terms of, of the pub sub and the, top, the topology, uh, gossip sub, I think there's been a recent creation of gossip, well, implementation of gossip sub in IPFS. So you may want to uh, either use that or, or be inspired by, by it. Um, it's, so the, the, the use case is that it's optimized, it's not optimized, so it's not optimized for a single source. Uh, whether the epidemic broadcast trees protocol is typically optimized for the single source. So like it works real well if you have like a, one, one node is producing all the data, uh, but it kind of, um, how do you say, it, it, it flaps when, when there's multiple sources of, of, of data. Um, so that may, that may be interesting in, 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 in pursuing the gossip stuff. Um, Protocol, which is something that Peerstar, I think, should also uh, at a given time use once it's implemented on JS IPFS or even drive the implementation of that in JS IPFS. But you're lucky if you're using Go, you probably may use Go, Go, Go's implementation of, of uh, Gossip Sub. Um, yeah, I think I'll put together a document of some sort describing what you know what parts I think I can use from the pub sub world and what parts not and and mm -hmm. see what people think about whether there's an appropriate bridging there or not so yeah and and you you'll I think just I don't want to along too much but uh, I think you'll probably reach the the, the same stage as, as at the peer star where like for for rapid sync you you create a specific protocol for for seeking in, in our case in this case sorry deltas uh, and and synchronizing deltas over that 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 are uh, have vector clocks. It's a very specific. Uh, um, so it's a very specific protocol um, because because deltas have have this this property of being joinable, and but not so much with operation based CRDTs. If you want to make it generic DAG like operation and, and make it applicable to all sorts of different uh, use cases, I think that's a good generic approach. I, I agree. Um, more more questions for Dean? No. Uh, so next is Marco. Hi guys. Uh, first time talking today. Um, so um, let me check my list. So coming coming back from from my vacation. So first, uh, I needed to sync with design working group. A few things uh, affected uh, our working group as well. Uh, so right now, I need to update our design file structure uh, based on the discussions that we've had with the design working group. And this will be very useful for for anyone who is um, doing work uh, that has any any type of, of design work embedded in it. Uh, so peer, peer pad would be a, a good example of this. Um, then uh, one thing we still need to, to decide for now, uh, for the specify, we're still using GitHub to store the, um, 
of the design assets. Uh, that's something that the design working group is still uh, deciding on where we will store that, all that information because one thing is storing the information, the other thing is how do you actually get people to collaborate on those files. Um, some of these, well, all of these projects are open source. So if you want to be using, for instance, Google Drive, which is one of the options, um, how do you get the community at large uh, to access those files and be able to to contribute on, on those files? So that's something that still needs to be solved. Um, another thing that is in discussion there uh, is how the DDC and other uh, working groups should interact and request request stuff from the design working group. That's uh, we're talking about the, the um, lab OS. Um, how this should actually work? It's still a work in progress as well. Um, so uh, moving on, uh, we are right now creating a, a table of possible uh, statuses, as, as Andre Souza uh, mentioned, uh, essentially intervenient um, status and messaging for each of those. Um, uh, intersections. Uh, once we have a, a solution, we will present to you um, to gather feedback. Uh, then, in, in our view, this 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 is a problem that is typical to all um, peer star apps. And ideally, on peer peer star, we should provide uh, essentially a table of recommendations of, of user experience for anyone building on top of of, of peer star. You, you should approach it this way and communicate it this way. Uh, for, in order to be simple for, for the user. Uh, this will likely be adopted by PeerPad, uh, which is something um, Solza is already working on. Then we will apply it also on, on Discussify and eventually on IDM. Um, okay, so one note, this might require information on PeerStar that is not available yet for the developer. So once we have that information, we, we will discuss uh, with, with, with Pedro. Uh, it should be able to, to help us with that. Um, what's next? Uh, okay, so one, one of the things now that we're uh, reaching a certain stage on, on Discussify, uh, we want to make it easier to launch um, updates and gather feedback from, from people who are testing. Uh, right now you have to install it uh, manually, so we want to put it more a bit more public uh, on, the, um, on the Chrome Web Store and uh, add-ons for, for Firefox. Uh, again, not not a, a real real launch. So the idea is not to have it fully functioning, fully functional. Uh, the idea is to make it easier for beta testers uh, to come on board, uh, to gather feedback from those people, and be uh, easier to uh, release the updates. So where Chrome Web Store and other add-ons for Firefox, a few things need to to improve. It's not blocking. Uh, we will likely uh, improve the the banner. Uh, there's an issue there of things that will likely improve uh, and um, there's the the, the um, peer and pinning connectivity and consistency consistency status uh, which needs to be reviewed with uh, with Sosa and and Andre Cruz so blocking uh, in order to launch this uh, we need to finish for Zidag and integrate in, into Discussify that's Andre is doing um, there's the pinner integration and this um, directly relates to the following Point, which is that in order to, or so, so that we don't have a permanent um, data um, in the pinners because we know this is still data, we want to discard information. So we will recommend Victor to implement a uh, time to live on that data so that we can keep moving, um, releasing new versions and, and anything that was discussed until then is just um, evicted. Uh, we will combine that with versioning just to make sure that new versions of the, the extension don't uh, use old uh, stale data. Um, another thing that needs to be decided is uh, who owns the key to publish the, the, um, the extension, specifically Chrome uh, Web Store uh, uses um, public uh, private public keys. Um, for Firefox add-ons, and this is something that Andre will need to do, uh, is um, there is a slightly different manifesto uh, that needs, well, well, we'll have likely a template that is used to generate both the Chrome uh, and, and Firefox manifests. Okay. Next up um, for, for this next cycle, so we will want to create copy and image for the stores. Uh, the brand manual here will, will be useful. Uh, we need to find solutions to gather feedback and metrics from the uh, beta testers. So people um, um, uh, providing feedback on their own or uh, just capturing uh, metrics from, from usage uh, errors and that sort of thing, just to make sure that we know what's, what's happening. Uh, we will also 
probably, and this is something we need to discuss, um, I need to discuss with Pedro, um, we should probably find influencers and, and the channels or mediums uh, where uh, we could announce this effort to gather interest around the, the, the project. Uh, this could be helpful for the whole peer pad, um, sorry, peer app uh, ecosystem. And finally, hopefully in this next cycle, uh, we will have it on the, on the, on the stores published. Awesome, thank you. Um, just uh, just to say something that I, I, I remember, Marco, regarding yeah. the, the versioning and the time to leave. We can yeah. actually just, and, this, and be aware that this is just a simple solution. So to, to, to actually like evict the old data, we can just um, use the version, the major version, uh, and prefix or prepend it to the collaboration names. So that, you know, each time a major version um, or a minor, let's say, let's say like that, uh, is bumped. Uh, there's a new collaboration going on. Yeah, um, that's an so option. Pedro, this, this is just uh, for for you to be aware. Like we are, we are, um, um, we have like um, uh, we are we are being careful regarding the data and migrations. So this is something that uh, needs to be carefully thought out. Uh, and for now, we are just uh, looking into a simple solution where uh, whenever the data changes, uh, the data is lost completely. So this is, of course, something temporary. And this, this is something only for the alpha beta, beta stage mm -hmm. um, until we, we plan the migrations part uh, uh, carefully. So yeah, we, we can just, there, there's two, two things that we can do. One is, you know, as I said, prefix or, or suffix the collaboration names. Another one is to whenever I receive an update on the App Store and it's um, a breaking change, I can just, you know, uh, delete the, the IPFS repository and it's gone. Mm -hmm. um, and also the pinner should reflect that as well. Um, so yeah, perhaps we could discuss that uh, afterwards. Uh, one, one suggestion. Um, considering we're working for for the permanent web, um, one could argue that even even if there is um, old data that is that is no longer valid, uh, considering we will be well, we have repositories, so anyone who wants to actually build an old version can build an old, old version if they need to. So that that would be an argument for keeping the information in the pinners. Um, just in case you need to go back and try something out. Um, so the, your suggestion of, of just going for the version and, and uh, prefixing or suffixing uh, the collaboration would probably be a, a better solution. Yeah. But keep in mind, of course, that this will be data that is filling up uh, the, 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 the pinning servers just, just because. Yeah. All right, let's, let's, uh, let's address this in a, in a GitHub issue. Um, I think just just general comments in in, in that in that subject uh, that I well quick quick things uh, before we settle on a, on a like a, um, some sort of versions DAG uh, like the version that we've been discussing and things that Adina has been discussing before we uh, gather all the use cases and and try and settle on on one uh, data model. Uh, I think that data loss is going to be an issue. I think, and then we'll have to factor in uh, things like like migrating from one collaboration to, into the other. Will that be a part of the migration or not, uh, of, of the CDT or not, and how how, how do, we do we need consensus on that or not? Uh, and so it's uh, I don't think we do, we do need, um, but there's some drawbacks on that. So we can we can, we can perhaps see like a longer longer thread, longer conversation that we can have. Uh, offline on, on GitHub, uh, for instance, because there's like a lot of ramifications on on, on, on any solution. Um, yeah. My suggestion, Marco, is for you to create like an issue, release, um, uh, release specify in, in Chrome Store and Firefox add-ons, and just, you know, uh, create a list of to-dos uh, there. Um, and in, uh, we include a point mentioning this part of the data and, and the loss of data and how to approach that. And, and we know it's just linked to that issue and we can discuss that separately. Okay, okay. Right. Uh, also, also, it allows you, uh, uh, allows ha uh, has to know what's the status of the launch and what's missing and what's not. Okay, okay. My suggestion. Um, any questions for Marco? I have uh, just a suggestion. Uh, so that's 
the you're defining the design system for peer star and um uh well design system that some perhaps some some ux recommendations for how to integrate peer star into how to create apps basically and so there's also conversation being had with a public one with the gui um uh, working group and the GUI working group uh, idea is to also create this uh, actual set of components that you can then import in, into different peer star uh, applications uh and, and and that's well that's like a long term goal for next year i would say uh but there there are some technical requirements that that entails but uh i think it's it's a doable one just and has but has to be synchronized with uh, the designing right design then then the the, the actual GUI implementation and then the dapps and perhaps also uh, peer star stuff um so there's there's like a bigger conversation that we we all need to have in, in terms of the, this flow of, of design and, and, and implementation okay okay all right um any more anyone else missing uh me <laughs> hey, Andre. yeah of course you yeah, we'll talk with okay um so uh concluded um i finished the replies uh, in discussify and also the lazy load of the comments um, including the replies so i will actually uh, make a, a demo if possible by the end of the like this session so that we can see that working so crypto crypt party saying that is a plate available <laughs> so i can see my notes <laughs> let me refresh the browser Pedro, did you like Yeah, this? me too, me too. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so concluded, it, that's it, the replies. Uh, regarding the in progress, um, basically I had, I had, I, I need to finish the histories uh, and uh, the history and the versioning of comments so that anyone can see um, the history of a comment, either because it was deleted or because it was uh, updated. And uh, this resulted uh, in a discussion of creating uh, a module called actually two modules one called versidag which is you know um, um ipfs uh, a non-related ipfs module uh, that supports versioning uh, via dag i've created an issue that i linked before but uh, i probably lost in the you know the crypto path, crypto path uh, issues. I will I will paste it there afterwards. But uh, essentially, it will allow, it will allow uh, Discussify and other apps to add add versioning to anything, to any document or any comment or any other data structure that you might want. It's really very abstract, and the goal is later to develop also IPFS Versidag, which is just a wrapper around Versidag that simply um configures the, the write node and the read node, node functions to use ipfs um so that it's easier to use um so i i my, my status on that i have a working version of versida with, with just a few tests working i need to finish finish the tests and you know write the readme and and so on i i will like finish finish the module in one to two days um Worst case scenario, and then I need to integrate the model into into Discussify to have the histories and the versioning. Um, so blocks uh, in terms of the the persistency of the data, uh, in this case the pinner and the SyncUI language. So the pinner, as far as I know, is being um, integrated into into the infrastructure and and uh, the CI workflow, I think. So. Um, I'm, I don't know the status of that. I think Victor is not here, but I will try to wish, wish him out or, or read the issue about, about that in the infrastructure. I've been subscribing to that issue where he's discussing the, the approach to have the pinner um, integrated in the, into the infrastructure and so on. But, but the last update that I, that I read, read was that they are still working on that. And also the sync Y language is basically, you know, what uh, Marco and uh, Andres was talked about earlier. So um, they are they are coming with a solution for PeerPod and also writing the table of all the combinations of statuses. So I will wait for, for what they come up with and then I will um, get back to it once we have a def definite uh, solution. Uh, 
for that. Um, next one, um, yeah, it's into, it integrate, uh, to integrate IPFS versus DAG into the SCSI file so that we have history. Uh, this will require a small refactor uh, because the CRDT at the moment has a few fields that can be removed in favor of um, diversity DAG. More, more specifically, I have um, the latest updated uh, timestamp and also the CID of the comment that now live in the in diversity DAG, in diversity DAG nodes. Essentially, the heads, the heads of the diversity DAG node uh, contain the all that information for me. So I'll I will just get rid of that and use diversity DAG uh, data for for that. Uh, by the way, Versidag is just a name that I came up with. I, I think it's like a, a, a good name, but I, I, I don't know if you guys have any suggestions for it. Um, so next on, um, next on, I have a, a point here, which is either uh, I dedicate the next, uh, the next one to two weeks to launch Discussify, or either I kickstart identity slash IDM. So as Marcus said, um, we, we really need to, you know, make it easier for users to experiment Scassify and use Scassify via the, the Chrome store and the Firefox add-ons uh, store. Uh, but to do that, we need to uh, do some stuff. More specifically, we need to uh, prepare the manifest of the extension uh, to be compatible with Firefox. There, there's basically a few fields, um, some fields that are, um, exclusive to Chrome and I need to exclude those fields for, for Firefox. So this, this is more like a build step phase where I create a manifest JSON for Chrome and a manifest JSON for, for Firefox. Uh, we need to come up with a solution for the versioning of the data model so that you know we don't deal with migrations for now. Uh, also, we need to implement the new banner slash header, which is smaller and, and also pre prettier. Um, and also, we need to we need to publish on the store uh, by having a logo, uh, decide the copy of the description of the, the app, and also the the public key. We need to either uh, generate a public key and and pass the the private slash public key to the infrastructure team. I don't know, or or they supply a, a public key for us, or they publish the the, the thing. Uh, we don't know. I think we need to reach out uh, the PFS um, extension. Um, or the team that did the extension, so that we uh, probably follow what they what they uh, did uh, in relation to the public key or and the private key to publish. Um, but as as you know, and I've been talking about a few a few points, this will take some time, and uh, there's also separate tech, a track about identity and identity manager that we uh, talked previously to start by this week early this week um so i'm kind of you know i i i want to have the feedback about what i should do next and also there's an opportunity for uh you know to bring to 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 get some help um in this in this uh, um, to, to launch this classify because the things that are listed here are not very complicated at all uh, they're kind of simple so yeah i want some feedback on on what i should do next either kickstart identity slash idm or, or launch this classify um and also i need i need to prepare my talk about um dapps plus ipfs plus peer startup for OpoJS. Uh, pedro can you open the link that i gave you on slack so that uh, so that I, I can. Sure. Oh, you're not sharing anymore. <laughs> I'm wanting to share. I can share. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I will be one of the speakers of the next OpoJS uh, meetup. And this is a very important meetup because it has a lot of known faces. Um, we have Andre Garcia, uh, which is um, a Mozilla developer um, that has been working on Lib the web. Um, and also we have Alex from, from Protocol as well um, to talk about probably IPFS, I don't know. Uh, and I'll be talking about um, this stuff as well. It, it's N NPM on IPFS. NPM on IPFS, okay. And I'll be talking about peer startup and, and it's basically um, an adaptation of the talk that, uh, or the, the workshop that we are being given, um, Pedro, but with the, 
with some differences as well, hopefully improvements. Um, yeah, and that's it for me. Okay, cool. Uh, thank you, Andre. Any questions for Andre? No, so um, it's demo time. Uh, so we have, like, we have like five minutes. I'm going to try and make it uh, a quick demo. And if the demo gods allow me. Uh, so uh, peer pads, end-to-end -end load tests. I'm going to demo the, the new version of uh, PeerStar app uh, running on, on, on peer pad. Uh, so does everyone see my, my screen, right? <coughs> Okay, so on PeerPad, checked out NPM run test H2B load. Um, and so, fingers crossed. Okay, this is starting. This is end-to-end uh, -end load tests, but with... Um, Are you using Cypress? Uh, no, I'm using uh, Puppeteer, and so I'm. What I'm doing is like, uh, well, typically Puppeteer tests are not are not are headless, but I'm just just for demo purposes. I I, I took the headless uh, option out, and so that where I'm injecting random, not random sequential characters, but each each peer picks one character, and so they're they're at the same time injecting. Um, characters on, on, on the pad and hopefully by the end of that um, that phase they will all be converging if not there is an issue um, and so let's hope so right right behind here I'm just writing the deltas that everyone is suffering uh, so um, Sorry about I lost the windows. Um, oh yeah, so mm. Mm. demo gods they didn't help. Uh -oh. me. Yeah, <laughs> they didn't help. The, the demo gods didn't help on this one. Uh, I I bet it's related to yeah something is weird. Um, more or less all. Oh, there was something blocking some of these guys. So there's random changes being propagated uh, across across them, and then there is um, this. Then then there is this process on, on behind that's polling for the state and making sure that the state they reach the state of of convergence, which I believe. Uh, they reach, and then after that, they make random changes. Now we enter the phase of random changes on a pad. Um, so again, this is inserting and removing characters at random, and then waiting a bit and seeing if all the the peers are in sync. This is how I found out that uh, we were exchange a lot of time we were ex in these scenarios exchanging a lot of state instead of just the deltas. And now I'm printing the deltas, and the deltas are pretty small. As you, as you can see, um, so back to the demo. Uh, so the changes have stopped now. Um, and hopefully they're all on the same pad state. And now, uh, after some time out, the, the test runner will realize that they have all the same state, compared state, and the test is completed. And this is the the end to end load test that Jim was was referring to earlier. Um, the the timeout are timeouts are conservative because we had uh, bigger sync times before. Hopefully now they're 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 smaller. Uh, as you can see, they're they're not changing for haven't changed for a while. So the the injection phase ended. All good. Uh, so if you want to check check this out and and have uh, in the tests are peer pad tests, each we load. There is a bunch of configuration here, spawning the cluster of a puppeteer, uh, had, uh, some options on puppeteer. So I invite you to play with it, uh, with the concurrency and see what comes out. 
uh, and, tr and try and use uh, Pure Star app latest. And thank you. I'll stop sharing. All right. Uh, we, uh, we've reached the, the our limit, but there is a, another demo, I think, on the list. If people can wait a bit, uh, if not, uh, it's actually very fast. It's just Andre? okay, like one you. minute. I promise. So yeah, I will share my screen. Okay, I put this share screen. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, uh, so I'll I'll ask for help. Uh, in this case, Andres was a, is prepared to help me out to you know showcase this demo. So I'm I'm here on the the working group uh, dynamic data and capabilities, and we are uh, use the the reply feature just to you know showcase it uh, working. So Andre, can you reply to my my comment? Okay, cool. I will just add some something like uh, some other reply, some other reply. Okay, and I will also add a few more. And a few more. Okay, so if I, if I refresh, I see that the replies are still there and I see um, they are being collapsed. So uh, only the latest two replies are being shown to the user and you can lazy load them as, as you want. Um, so you can expand, expand them. Um, I will add a few more just quickly so that you can see um, the pagination. Andre, should we go for the yeah, third yeah. level? Yeah, okay. Yeah, you can, and, and also help me fill some comments so that it's faster. Yeah. Um, I, I just need to reach out 10 comments so that you, you see the load more working on. Okay, yeah, Marco is helping too. Thank you, Marco. <laughs> um, yeah, I will try to, ref oops, I'll try to refresh that and see if it's working. Hopefully, yeah, we have uh, 14 replies. So if I open that, it shows um, like it, it expanded 10 more and uh, it expanded the last four ones. So I will actually show just a lazy load part. I will just add a few, of, oh, actually a bunch of comments just for you to see the, loads, the lazy load part working. Hopefully that's enough. Um, and if I refresh and if I, I scroll, hopefully the connection delay is not um, visible. So if you see my scroll position here, it's, you, see, you see it's lazy loading the list of comments. I will replay that. But it's too fast, so it's great. <laughs> yeah, it's actually very fast, you know, because I have all the data locally. But uh, if I if I have, uh, haven't uh, haven't downloaded the CIDs, it will show a placeholder, and then it will um, show the comments once loaded. So yeah, that's the demo. Uh, I, I think that's it. Yay! Thank you. Very good. Very cool, man. Cool. All right. Um, so, any questions, comments? Yeah, I just wanted to say that I will follow up on, on um, about what I should do next. Uh, like, should I focus on launching uh, IDM, uh, sorry, launching Discussify on uh, the Chrome uh, store or the, the, and the Firefox add-on store, or just focus on, on bootstrapping the, the identity slash IDM part. Uh, I will probably send an email to Pedro about my ideas also um, regarding this, because there's, um, there's uh, the thing. The thing that uh, blocks the release of uh, Deskify um, is not like major things that can like we can bring help easily to do those parts. Um, so yeah, okay. I will, I let's will, let's uh, talk. Let's talk. Uh, let's talk uh, after. Yeah. Okay. Any questions, comments, in general? No. So. Uh, 
let's let's hang out to the people that are interested in the David, David's um, uh, security um, conversation. Um, if not, see you around. Thank you for coming. Thank Bye. you. Bye -bye. Thank you all. Bye. See ya. <laughs>